It is officially the season of insane mock drafts and what comes with that? Well, it comes with some wild mock trades. In this video, we'll be taking a look at an article published by Sportsnet that speculated on some potential trades for Mitch Marner. And with Brad Tree Living, former James GM, being at the helm of the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Calgary Flames can't help but be roped into this and there is an absolutely bonkers mock trade that would send Mitch Marner to the Flames and I want to know from you guys, Flames fans, or Leafs fans, what are your thoughts on this potential blockbuster? Before we get into all of that, though, I want to welcome you to Flames Digest. I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new around here and you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe, because only just around 20% of the people watching are subscribed. So if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors revolving around the Calgary Flames, then make sure you join the fastest growing community of Flames fans on the internet. We would love to welcome you to the Flames Digest family. We're on the road to 2K subscribers, and we'd love to take you on this journey. But like I said, this is a really, really wild trade proposal, and it's not from me, so before you come at my head, just know that it's from Sportsnet. If you came to comment just from reading the title of the video, that's okay, but really what's going on here is it is from uh, Sportsnet. So, let's get into this potentially realistic Marner trade. Now, I don't even know if it's really possible to come up with a realistic Marner trade where both sides win, because Leafs fans, the ones who want to get rid of him want a lot back, which makes sense. He's an absolute superstar. The Leafs fans who want to keep him don't want to hear about the trade talks. For Flames fans, there are a couple who want Mitch Marner because he's a great player, but the overwhelming majority of the Sea of Red would rather avoid Mitch Marner because he's another guy who maybe recently hasn't been as good in the playoffs. He's been pretty good in the playoffs over his career. A lot of people think he disappears. He actually has a lot of points but they want to avoid another Johnny Gaudreau type player. So more of a playmaker um, than an actual goal scorer. A number one center is what Flames fans want. So without further ado, let's get into this potential trade that in some ways can be realistic. I'll try and give it the benefit of the doubt, but really it's, it's a little bit wild like the title of this video suggests. So Calgary Flames would receive Mitch Marner, Fraser Minton, Nick Robertson, and Timothy Liljegren. And what do the Maple Leafs get back? Well, they get Jacob Markstrom, Rasmus Anderson, and the Flames would retain 25% of Markstrom's remaining salary. Right off the bat, from a neutral standpoint, and I'm going to assume most of the people watching this video are Flames fans with some Leafs fans, So, but let's try and look at it from the eyes of a neutral fan. From a neutral fan's standpoint, the Flames win this trade. Whether you like Mitch Marner or not and think he's a good fit or not, this would be an overwhelming win for the Flames. I don't know why people think that salary retention is worth so much, but to throw in a prospect as good as Fraser Minton or a very good young player like Nick Robertson just in order to retain only 25% of the salary, it is absolutely insane. So right away, I'm saying this isn't the most realistic trade because it's too much of a win for the Flames. Now, as a Flames fan, of course, Honestly, I would take this trade. I know we're in a rebuild and I want to commit to the youth, but this would instantly make them contenders in the Pacific Division again. Um, I know I'm thinking with my heart there in saying, yes, make this trade as if it would ever happen. But more so in my head, it makes more sense to let's just rebuild. Let's try this out. We tried too many times in the past to accelerate a rebuild and try to contend once again and maybe throw out some crazy contract. Now, the reason why this trade is somewhat realistic is because it's Brad Tree living at the helm of Toronto. Maybe part of him wants to still help Calgary after, you know, the way he went out, did the exact opposite with the Huberto trade and you can throw in the Monaghan trade as well. Um, but, you know, we've also seen he doesn't make great trades, so maybe that he'd be doing that for the Leafs. But let's get into what the article says. It is from Ryan Dixon of Sportsnet. I do have to say that all the credit due to him. Um, so here's why the Flames would do it. Every transaction Calgary has made in the past 12 months indicates the club is not inter interested in a teardown rebuild. Marner has three more seasons left in his 20s, so he's a guy who helps now and down the road. Liljegren is no Anderson, but he's a right shot guy who can slot in on the bottom pair and try to sketch out a new chapter of his career having just turned 25. Robertson has shown goal scoring potential and Minton is a plug and play prospect who at worst will be a fantastic third line center and leader. Both Robertson and Liljegren are RFAs this summer and both should be relatively simple signs. So really, it doesn't seem like the worst case scenario if Calgary does make this trade. The only thing I'll say that seems like an overwhelming no from a Calgary standpoint here 
is that Minton, he's a great prospect, but do we really need another fantastic third line center and leader? I feel like the Flames have too many of those. Backlund is great, but that is exactly what he is and what he has been his whole career. Kadri is getting older as well. So while he might be our number one center now, he's kind of another one of those guys who down the road might just be another, you know, great leader, but third line center type. Do we want that from Fraser Minton as well? I don't know. But who says that the Flames should even get Fraser Minton in this trade? I personally think that in a trade like this, that the prospect is thrown in, it has to be because of that small salary retention, which really isn't all that much for the remainder of Markstrom's contract. I think to make it a more realistic trade, not that I think this really could work out from either side and either fan base would be happy, but I think the Flames, to make it more realistic, should only get one of either Nick Robertson or Fraser Minton. Um, so before I explain it further, let's let the article do some talking as well for why the Leafs should do it. So why the Leafs would do it, both Markstrom and Anderson are under contract for two more seasons. You're adding a goalie who had great underlying numbers last year, albeit at age 34, and a right shot D-man who plays big minutes. With Calgary retaining a bit on Markstrom, it's basically a wash cap-wise, and you're adding big pieces in two areas of need. Minton is a quality prospect with the emergence of 2023 first-rounder Easton Cowan, and the presence of youngster Matthew Nyes gives you enough next-generation guys up front. So really what this is saying here is, it would extend the Leafs window to truly contend here because something isn't working. Now they did just fire Sheldon Keefe today. Um, so who knows what the upcoming coach wants to do with the core four. Will he want to get rid of it? Will he want to develop them himself? I guess we'll have to see. But what they're saying here is you don't need to worry about Robertson because you already have Nyes. You don't need to worry about Minton because you already have Cowan. Now Leafs fans, I'm assuming would want to keep all those players anyway. And with a new coach coming in. I know Leafs fans are begging for this coach to give Nick Robertson top six minutes. That's how much they believe in this guy. Now, obviously, Robertson would instantly slide right into the Flames lineup and be fantastic. Um, there's no doubt about that. He's a right winger. Um, the Flames do have quite a few wingers, but if you bring in a good right winger, then you can absolutely draft a center, which I know a lot of Flames fans want and would be great in helping this rebuild. But if you do this trade, then is there still really a rebuild? I don't know. I don't see this being super realistic from either side. I don't know why it makes sense. There's an overwhelming amount of people online who are commenting on this article and other videos I've seen about this mock trade that say, you know what? This is kind of a realistic trade. I think we should do this kind of thing. And it's surprisingly coming from a lot of Leafs fans. And I thought Leafs fans would think this was a huge no. I think Leafs fans are just willing to do anything to try to kind of change this sort of history. Now, in this chapter, let's still look at the potential lineups here. So let's start with the Flames, of course. We are a Flames channel. So without Rasmus Anderson, if you see him there, he's the number two on the second D pairing there with Oliver Shillington. That's where he was to end the season. You take him away, Lilia Green fits in right now. He's an instant replacement. He's a right-handed D-man who, who would go on the right. You know, he's a Swede as well, so we'd add an a Swedish defenseman to the lineup, if Shillington is still even here, of course. And that one makes perfect sense. Now, if you look at the Leafs lineup that they iced in Game 7 against Boston, it looked like this, and there's no Nick Robertson in it. Very interesting lineup. I know there were crazy things going on with, you know, Austin Matthews injury slash illness or whatever, same thing with Nylander. But this was the lineup they chose to play in Game 7. Um, and as you can see there, Nick Robertson, who is a right winger, didn't even play. Gregor came in instead. So it's interesting. Maybe the Leafs don't need Robertson. I know a lot of Leafs fans want to keep him because he's so good and has so much potential. But either way, this trade proposal is absolutely wild. I couldn't believe it when I read it. If this were to be an actual proposal to Craig Conroy, it would be tough not to pull the trigger on it because you'd be getting so much back. And it really would be a win. Um, and for the Leafs, it could be a win as well. Addressing getting a number one goalie. I know a lot of Leafs fans don't think Markstrom is a number one goalie. I just think Leafs fans didn't watch a lot of Flames games this year. Markstrom really kept the Flames competitive until after the trade deadline when the Flames had no one left. So it's really, really interesting. I don't know if I'd want to lose Markstrom that way. I'd rather maybe get a higher pick or something from another team. But either way, I want to know your thoughts down in the comments. Would this be a good trade for the Flames? Would it be a good trade for the Leafs? It's insane. I want to get some more perspective. Now let's move on to last night's game. I'm talking about the Wranglers here, of course, down in the Calder Cup playoffs. 
They played game three against the Coachella Valley Firebirds. The series was tied 1-1, and now, unfortunately, it is 2-1 for Coachella Valley. A big 7-5 win, an insane game it was um, down there in Cali. But, unfortunately, the Wranglers do lose. You know, they were able to get some leads and at least claw back a bit, but the Firebirds were just too much on this occasion. Dustin Wolf, as you can imagine, did not have his best game. Um, it was really too bad because the Wranglers did kind of fix their power play woes a little bit, but it just was not enough. Coachella Valley, hats off to them. They just scored like crazy. It is now do or die for the Wranglers. They have to win the next two games in order to move on in the playoffs. The next game is tomorrow night. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with them. Let's try and manifest some big wins here as Flames fans and Wranglers fans in the herd. Now let's wrap up this video with the comment of the day. And it goes well with, you know, kind of this mock draft season. What can the Flames do in some sort of trades? And I really like this comment here from our boy Pinball. Uh, he comments quite a bit, a good regular here. He said, Corey Schneider was traded to Vancouver for eighth overall. I think if you can trade Markstrom for a top 10 pick, you absolutely do it. So this kind of proves that big goalies can go for a high draft pick. Now, Corey Schneider actually also was traded from Vancouver to New Jersey for the eighth, or sorry, the ninth overall pick. And it ended up being a big win for Vancouver as they ended up drafting their future captain, Bo Horvat, with that pick. So it does prove, you know, you can trade a number one goalie. I'd almost argue Markstrom is definitely a better goalie now than Schneider was when that trade happened. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit biased, but to show that Markstrom could go one for one, one Markstrom for one high-end pick. You know, there's teams like New Jersey that are just behind us that could do that, that want to win now. Ottawa and Seattle who are just ahead of us in the draft that could do that it's definitely a possibility and I hope it is one that the Flames do explore it could be more of a beneficial trade than this crazy potential Marner trade is but either way thank you so much for watching this video please subscribe if you like what you saw here today and have a wonderful rest of your day